ready. Whatever it takes. Ah, excellent choice. Still in control. Just. If not over, then through. Ah, stranger. Forgive the aroma. You catch a waft of something foul, metallic, and sickly sweet. Powdered iron vine. An old hunter's trick. Most monsters will think twice before making a meal of me. You're a monster hunter. I'm surprised. I thought all girl were vagrant cutthroats. A mystical and dangerous people. We travel the land, never settling in one place. We steal your chickens, curse your crops, seduce your daughters. Your friend here has heard it all, I'm sure. I wish I had half the power settled folk think my people possess. Alas, I am a simple wanderer. A simple wanderer and monster hunter. But I'm no witch doctor or cutthroat. True. And I have no proof to offer but my word. If you wish it, our paths need not cross again. I'm hunting a vampire spawn. And it's a little too bright for you to be my prey. His name is Astarian. But I fear he's gone to ground. I hope the hag of these lands can help me flush him out. If I can afford her blood price. Not this time. My orders are to capture him. Oh. Uh, and bring him where, exactly? Baldur's Gate. My people wait for me there. I don't know. I'm sure a vampire spawn could still rip out your throat if he felt like it. He is right, unfortunately. They are only weak when compared to their masters. During the day, we have the advantage. But at night, when they hunt, you'll not find a more deadly quarry. We've all survived so far. Let's focus on that. It would still be wise to post guards at night. The threat is real. Indeed it is. We should do something about this threat. Wait, that's it. We're just walking away. What? What? It isn't possible. You idiot! What have you done? There? I'm afraid you're wrong.
see their chances. Ahead. Ready. Still breathing, despite everything. Your desire. <laughs> not so. Corpse seems willing to speak, but not to its killer. regards you lifelessly. Our children. He knows where they are. Much. Nothing. You can spend. Wise. Woman. Questions.
I don't want a crumb left on that plate, girl. Auntie Ethel, please. One more bite, and this pie is gonna come back up to say hello. Don't make me get the wooden spoon. You're eating for two, so get to it. If it isn't the cheekiest pop of them all, you'd best have one hells of an apology for me, young man. I do like the mouthy ones. You know, I was going to give you a swift kick up the arse and show you the door. But I think you and I could have a bit of fun together. Gods, grant me patience. Eat up, Marina. I won't say it again. Keep that hole under your nose shut, or things will get messy. Well, you hurt the lady. We don't want things to get messy. What is it? What's going on? That can't be true. Auntie Ethel. They were being rude, and I detest rudeness. You monster! The deal is off! Enough! Away with you. Silence at last. Some time in the cage should do her good. And you, you'll regret sticking your nose in my business. Go! 
Still breathing, despite everything. Shouldn't have made me your enemy. What can I do for you? Mm, not anymore. Which is all that matters, really. I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Cazador wants me back. Cazador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate the patriarch of his coven, and a monster obsessed with power. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn, and he became my tormentor. It was him, I'm sure. Only he would know to send the Gur after me. It was a group of Gur that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died had Cazador not appeared and saved me. Perhaps. He probably thought it was funny. But more likely, he's trying to send me a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, he can reach me. And he wants me back. Maybe he wants to make an example of me, to show what happens to runaways. Or maybe he thinks death is too good for me. Safe! You think I'm safe? Do you know the power a vampire lord possesses? He can change shape, turn into mist, call walls to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. First, we have to... Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, if we kill his lackeys, he'll just send more. We just have to be vigilant, keep our wits about us, and kill any monster hunters on sight. Oh, don't mind if I do. Wish to live in more interesting times. Oh, wish I had a bag of holding.
What's hiding here? They should all be running. My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. And what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself, the lady of mysteries, the goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse and later even my lover. Oh yes. We enjoyed each other's company, body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. Swore my ambition was only to serve her better. 
She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess, and yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured, then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms. Until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? The answer was to try, and the outcome was to fail. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside, there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. What is it? What do you see? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Rather worse, actually. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep. My chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this, it must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. You'd have us debate that Netherese Jack-in-the-Box should be a blip on the horizon by now. 
I'm in two minds. And frankly, don't care a great deal. Either decision is fine by me. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. You are as thick as they come, sweetness. This is my personal playhouse, and you don't have an invite. Get out! God's alive, a paladin! You lot are drier than shite in the noonday sun. I've picked plenty of your brethren from my teeth, Petal. And I look forward to seeing how tasty you are. Ah! Stop! Please! Please! Wait! Wait! My sweet Callum, whose beloved asks that his beauty never fade. to lay eyes on her family again. Let me work my magic. <laughs> the corpse regards you lifelessly.
the bloody hells is going on? I... I remember that, but... I think she turned me to stone. Because of the bite, of course. I can't believe you fixed it. How did you cure me? Larigo's bite. I caught it when... Wait. You didn't... You didn't fix it. Why would you turn me back if you didn't? Oh, God! No! Ah! Help! I don't want to die! Ahead. Don't look. Don't. Seems like a good moment to talk. No, no, don't look. Mustn't look, mustn't see. I see it. What's to come? Me, dead, dead. Flesh rotten, bone shining! No future. Bone splitting, knife twisting, skull screaming, future! Gods, don't hurt me! Oh, please, 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 please! Monster! Monster! For mind dripping, flesh peeling, mind flayer! No, ah! no, no, no! I'm sorry! <laughs> You feel crushing waves of fear as the presence within the door recoils. It can't let people through, not again. Images flash. A man cowering, a bag open at his feet. Gold coins spilling onto the floor. His cries for mercy are cut short as the hag slices into him. 
dismembering him painstakingly, limb by limb. She cackles, the man's remaining flesh twisted and contorted, becoming the twisted surface of the door before you. Flee, you feel it cry. A scene appears in your mind. Two paladins and a cleric marching through the door, shrouded in the glow of the divine. Weapons brandished, they charge into the hag's lair. Screams of terror pierce the air. You let them in? Naughty. That's a decade for each. You're mine for 30 more years, Petal. The door stays silent. Its form flickers, and you realize that the door is transparent. as the door shakes, remembering the hag's smile. It remains firmly closed as the presence huddles within. Away! Away! You feel the barest hint of life from within the door. The door remains firmly closed as the presence shrinks, twisting with fear and despair. You feel the barest hint of life from within the door. You see the hag, eyes bright with glee as she sets fire to the door. With a jerk, you're pulled from the vision the presence within shrinks, begging you not to run through it. Stop. Please. Please! Don't touch me. Away! Away! You feel crushing waves of fear as the presence within the door recoils. It can't let people through. Not again. A scene appears in your mind. Weapons brought scream. You let them in! The door stays silent. You see that with a jerk, you're... Don't!
first step. I'll break their pretty little bones. Be useful. Another step forward.
traps, please. do once it's extracted nothing good can come of it unless it is contained why it might be useful who knows at this place all these people happy because of us it's nice to be somewhere where good is still possible and we're good potations too fuck yes I'm celebrating my freedom and our friendship and these folks bright future besides all I need now is a fire retardant lover to get lost in till sunrise. Not so much. You spend the whole time avoiding swords and schemes. Plus, people just get nastier as the night wears on. I tried to make friends at first. Learned my lesson fast. Better to keep to yourself in hell. You too, soldier. Enjoy yourself tonight. You've earned it. Have fun. Ahead. Hmm. So ferocious. That's what I... Look at them all. Guzzling poison like we've the right to be happy. It'll make the evening more tolerable. <sighs> this party's a bit more bearable, thanks to that pint. Thy wheel of fate turns ever to the dark. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection? Think of it. No more caves, no more tents, no more running away. We'll be in a city with roads and markets and homes. Patience? Have you no respect for showmanship? Having performance issues, Roland? Hush you. And... Behold! Adoring applause? You're too kind. Remember when he could barely cast that? They grow up so fast. Never have I met such troglodytes. Now, Pass the wine. Are Roland and Leah actually getting along? I know you cut down a horde of goblins, but this is far more impressive. Look at them. How happy they are. We did that. Yeah. Don't tell Roland. But his magic show might be the highlight. He's been doing them since we were little. He'll make it big in Baldur's Gate. I know it. I 
need to dance. No. No, I need to lie down. Shari! That's infernal for cheers. Or possibly turnip. Thank you. I'm glad you sought me out. Amidst all this merriment, I wasn't sure we'd have a chance to speak this evening. I was hoping you'd spare me a moment. There was something rather magical I wished to show you. A lesson. And trust me when I say few have experienced the pleasure I offer to teach. However, it's something best experienced in more intimate surrounds once the revelry has ended and the stillness of the night has been restored <laughs> for now please enjoy the celebration when it is done i will show you all there's promise in patience i assure you let the night run its course so that we can run ours as well Yeah, hells. I was hoping you wouldn't notice I was gone. No. I'm deeply proud of you. A touch less so of myself. In truth, I don't feel in a festive mood. And I didn't want to cast a grey cloud over the night. I'm a devil. I love the people from the Grove, but... I unsettle them deep down as I seem to unsettle everyone nowadays. You don't want a devil at your party. Horns this sharp will pop the balloons, you see, and the guests won't take kindly to scars quite so monstrous. If only half the world had half the heart you do. But off with you. This is your day. Have a dance. Enjoy the music. Sometime alone beneath the stars and I'll be back to my old self. Promise. Still, it's a night to remember. You've made sure of that. I do hope you have partaken of something bracing. This may well take us all night. But I am engaged in celebration of the purest form. Commemoration. If we are to write your legend in the stars, then we must first give you a name. That ballad was but a crude preview, a frame without its crowning jewel, your nom de guerre. Something iconic, but not too much of a mouthful. We don't want to exclude the common folk after all. I intend this tale to enrapture all. Far too much? This is the very problem. If you could set aside your many triumphs, carry out one defining act, not to belittle your achievements today, of course, but besting a dragon, a giant, a god, perhaps? Hmm. I must deliberate. Go, enjoy your evening. I shall have work for you in the days to come. Away and have your fun. I have a myth to make. Go on now. Don't waste a night like this talking to me. We'll discuss your problem tomorrow.
Later, perhaps. Don't worry about me. <sighs> A night under the stars amidst nature's creation is just what I need after being locked up in the goblin's dungeon. Go on, enjoy yourself. Seek out some wine before it runs dry. There are a lot of thirsty people around here. Hope you're enjoying the night, hero. I certainly am. Cheers to many more like this. You won't have to worry about us anymore. I'll fight anything we meet on the road. Anything. Watch out, Baldur's Gate. Chell's coming for you. You have no idea how good it feels to see these people smiling. The singing we could probably do without, but even so, thank you. I have seen the Kithraki tear a screaming Neogi's legs from its belly to fashion into blades, yet they could not match your nerve today. It was enough to drive me to madness. A pity for us you have promised your body to Gale. I've no doubt he's as seductive as he is succinct. Vlakith demands of me no less. Hmm. If only I might lay claim to my proper trophy. Come morning, you will wonder. You will wonder how my lips might have tasted. How my fingers on your skin might have felt. Oh, but do enjoy yourself this night. I intend to myself. Will looks particularly tempting. You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I'd be the one they'd toast for saving so many lives. And now that I'm here... I hate it. This is awful. True. That was fun. Still... I would have liked more for my trouble than a pat on the head and vinegar for wine. It's a heavy, rich red. Dry and sharp. See what I mean? Awful. All I want is a little fun. Is that so much to ask? Don't be so sour. I like a good time as much as anyone. You know, we could always make our own entertainment, darling. Get a little closer, so to speak. And here I mistook you for someone with taste. A pity. But have it your way. I'm happy to entertain myself. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. I saw you with Gale. You two looked... cozy. Far be it from me to judge. Blood must still be running a little hot after everything. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Your words, not mine. But not what I mean. I mean... desperate people. Like those refugees. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. That's more easily said by some than others. But nobody's here to debate right from wrong. Share a bottle with me? I won't keep you long. 
I gather you've already made plans with someone for your evening. Shadowheart says nothing, but the glimmer of interest in her eyes is unmistakable. Best not keep me waiting. I'd prefer not to entertain myself. of celebration quiets to a soothing hum as you approach your bunk. Your hand was sought by several, but there is only one night ahead. Whose company will you seek? At least for tonight. Your heart skips a beat. What treasures might this night bestow? You made it. Come here. Sit with me. Well, to begin, I think a toast is in order. Any suggestions? Very practical. We could have toasted to that every night so far. Here's to many more. Survival. Now tell me something about yourself. And no tadpoles, dragons, marauding goblins, or anything like that. Something about you. laugh, but I'm not quite sure I have anything to share. When you worship Shard, secrecy is everything. We'll sacrifice our own memories when ordered to. A lot of the little things, they're lost to me right now. Hm. I did. And you remembered. You're sweet. There's still plenty of wine, and the whole night is ahead of us. Nearly light. The others will be awake soon. What? I know. But you're sweet to notice. Thank you for last night. Me too. She trails off. You read an invitation in her eyes. That didn't hurt, did it? Good to know. For the future. Let's head back. If we must. I trust you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done, and I promised I would help you however I could. I'm certain a cure for you can be found at Moonrise Towers, but it's complicated. The journey specifically, it's extremely perilous.
though it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. To get to the towers, you'll need to pass through a terrible place, a cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings, tormented, dangerous souls. So it seems, though I don't know how, you will have to choose your approach carefully. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel somewhere in the ruined Temple of Saluna. It leads to Moonrise Towers through the Underdark. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorm built a secret stronghold deep down there, before rallying a whole army of Dark Justicias, Shah worshippers. Dark Justicias? I must see for myself. Aridan and his lot were looking for a way down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. But I think there's more. From this stronghold, Ketherick's forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers. But he was defeated before he could launch an attack. If you can find this place, I'll wager it will reveal a more direct path to Moonrise Towers. And maybe even bypass the worst of the Shadow Curse. Already? <laughs> if only I'd gone with you instead of Aradin. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. It seems our fates have aligned. May Sylvanus guide us. Cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. I assure you, I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. find a more learned opinion on this matter, I assure you. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. Pain shoots through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. I think I have it! The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a heartstring. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Volo carefully withdraws the needle from your eye, then reaching into his bag. He produces an ice pick. Volo slowly brings the ice pick closer to your eye. Now, don't 
Move. Cold metal presses against the skin beneath your brow. And then... Tap, tap, stab. Do you feel that? Ha! Huh. I think we have the blighter on the run! I agree. It's a feisty critter. Just a little further. Volo tears the pick from your brain with a violent jerk. Your eye plops down into the mud. Tret. He pauses, looks down at your eye, and recoils slightly as it sinks into the mud. to be an amount of cosmetic damage. Please, try not to overexert yourself. You're in a rather fragile state at present. I can't help but feel partly responsible. Perhaps there is something more I can do. Take this. A far superior relic to that old jelly you were chained to. Try it on for size. And, um, it was very nice to have met you. I'm sure you'll sort out your little brain problem one way or another. Far away from here, if you've a heart. Terribly sorry, my friend. Ta! Father's blessings to you. I studied one up close. Closer than most would care to be to those things. A drow attacked me and I defended myself. Afterwards, I was able to examine the tadpole that emerged. Hideous, but fascinating. Like nothing else in nature, I'm glad to say. Hopefully, I've chosen a successor as first druid. Francesca of the High Forest. I sent a bird to summon her. Precisely. Who indeed? You do not know, and neither do any of the others. The Grove needs to move beyond the mistakes of the past. What it needs is an unknown quantity. An outsider who can enforce the Oak Father's teachings without bias. This is why I chose Francesca. She will restore simplicity and purity to the Grove in my absence. Contrary to how some think of us, we druids can play politics when necessary. It's had the whole region around Moonrise Towers in a chokehold of darkness and despair for years now. Those who remained are shadow cursed. If you don't die at their hands, then you become one of them. We have to get to Moonrise. But the less time we spend in its blighted surrounds, the better. Precious little but I'm quite certain it can still be found. Those illithid creatures threaten the natural order. It's my duty to do what I can to stop them. There's also the Shadow Curse. It's an affront and must be cleansed. I helped overthrow Ketherick Thorm and his Dark Justicias years ago, but I failed to prevent him from unleashing darkness across the region before he was defeated. If I can join you and get close to Moonrise, perhaps I can lift this curse just as you find a cure for your infection. Well, there's hardly anyone left to share the responsibility with. Few who witnessed the fall of Moonrise still draw breath. What Ketherick Thorm unleashed is not something that nature can undo by itself. I must do what I can. I studied the Shadow Curse for years, but to truly understand it and stop it, I must reach its source. Perhaps. But we'll need to get closer before I can put my theory into practice. Put it from your mind for now. Once we near the curse, then there will be more to be said. Precisely. Then perhaps I could have done something about both the Shadow Curse and Ceramorphosis aberrations. But in my eagerness, 
I put far too much faith in the abilities of Aradin and his band. We didn't even get close. Miss it? <laughs> oh dear, no. It's a terrible burden. Takes you away from nature and forces you to deal with others' problems and personalities. Be wary of anyone who actually wants such a role, I say. Likely they don't understand it, or they have ill intent. I'm just glad to be out here amidst the Oak Father's creations. There are few things that are too strong for me. And cast those regrets aside. You did not get caught up in the moment. You seized it. In other circumstances, I would have done the same. Perhaps. But best to not dwell on nights past. There are plenty more yet to come. With such stimulating company? <laughs> Never better. Everything in your mind has been destroyed from what I gathered. And from the path I see you on, you are doing well at picking up the pieces. I am here to be your ear as you bear your burdens, and the arms that protect you if you can shoulder them no more. I believe you when you tell me that your symptoms do not wholly align with the makings of the Parasite. But, until we remove it, I doubt we will be able to isolate the rest of your troubles. Good lad, you're tougher than Blackwood. All's well, I hope. No. I just wanted to see how you felt after the night we spent together. When we talked and kissed. I hope so too. Though I'm not sure what kind of courtship will be afforded, given all that we're facing. But if you want to see where this goes, I do as well. Wouldn't you be in my place? If there's even the slightest chance that Shah worshippers remain within our reach, we should try and find them. Even if they're all long gone, and that seems quite likely from what we know, who knows what they may have left behind for us to use? My people are nothing if not resourceful. As long as I've prayed to Lady Shah, I've wished to serve her as a dark justicia. There is scarcely a greater way to fully dedicate yourself to Lady Shah, save perhaps if you become the head of her church. To become a Dark Justicia is to become the Night Singer's sword arm, her implement with which she will cast down the unbelievers and win the final battle to restore her perfect, endless darkness. It's all I ever wanted. I prayed it was my calling. But Mother forbid me from seeking to prove myself worthy of the rank. She said I was not ready. Not my mother mother, I should add. The Mother Superior, head of Lady Shah's enclave in Baldur's Gate. Sometimes I wonder if she would ever deem me ready. I owe her everything, and I only wish to serve, yet she can prove inscrutable. I don't know. Perhaps if I succeed in my mission and reach Baldur's Gate, hope has little place amongst Lady Shah's children. 
It's an illusion. A distraction. But for this... I hope my time will yet come. Dark Justicias are hated by many, judged to be ruthless fanatics. Even the few who would accept a follower of Lady Shah would likely balk at a Justicia in their midst. But there's a simpler answer to your question. I simply forgot about the desire I had, until I saw some things that reminded me. Now, I can't get it out of my mind. Very serious of you, but go ahead. Always good when I'm with you. At the ready. No time to rest. My faith protects me. No time for Dally. Keep a blade close. Oh, I have the magic touch. All is ash and meat. Hmm. Direct me. Well, that ends yeah, not as bad as it could have.
had my attention. None like it. Wits and blades always sharp. How delicious. No one back home will ever believe this. Breathe deep and move. your taste. Still alive, so that's progress. Seek and you shall find me. What's next, I wonder? This way. Best avoid that trap. Salutations. What a day. Let's be quick. Traps. How considerate. Oh. A long way from water deep. Charmed, I'm sure. No rest for the wicked, I see. Let's get going. These boots have seen everything. There. In the cage.
you come to my home, interfere in my business, and now have the gall to face me in the heart of my lair, you petulant bollocks! I'll rip your spine out your asshole! I'll use your blood to spice my stew! I'll keep you alive until I've sucked the marrow from your bones. And then I'll bring you back and do it all over again. Stop it! Please, let me go! You want the girl so bad. Fine. The girl hasn't got long, if you plan to save her. Good hands. Oh! 
Take me yet. The gods are watching me. to bring him back, bring on her back to life. I have nothing, all right? Ethel promised to raise the child, teach them magic, give them a good life. It's a damn sight better than I can do. I just wanted everything back. Back the way it was. It's 
my own fault for letting her. Look, I don't like owing people. Here, this socket is worth some coin. Really? That's... My husband gave it to me. I should take him home. His coffin is just upstairs. A decent burial is the least I can give him. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone else who would have saved me. I bet that'll fit in my pack. What's in here? Ready and willing. How many die today? How many die tomorrow? Have I been this way before? Coming. I know I should head home, but I can't bring myself to leave. The thought of putting him in a wheelbarrow and making the journey all over again. <sighs> Not even a little bit. But I will be. We were just kids when we met. <laughs> I might have pushed him off a swing I wanted. He got right up and pushed me back. I was so surprised that I just laughed. He did too. We've barely spent a day apart since. No! He deserves a proper burial! He deserves some rest. And he won't get that here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't bring you back.
pave my path with corpses, build my castle with bones. Seems almost too big to take flight. It would be too much to hope that's nothing to do with us, wouldn't it? You go a lifetime without seeing one, and then they won't stop pestering you. I suggest we admire it from afar. I have something to ask. Hold up before they see you, Magresham! What? Apart from the dragon? Look. That lot are swarming all over the bridge. I don't know what they want, but it can't be good. I'm going to find another way around. You ought to do the same. Unless you're looking for a fight, that is. Nobody. Just another harassing fool trying to stay alive. There's plenty of us around. What? Just follow you around? I go my own way. Alone. Rag! That's it. I'm getting out of here. Drop your weapons! I'll feed your innards to the ants before I do that, Istik. This is your last chance! No, look up. That was your last chance, Istik. Now burn! Wasting time, Beretha. You're not here to play with the locals. Of course, Kithrak. We merely sought to. No excuses. Question, kill, then move on. Find the weapon. Our queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. <laughs> Can we kill them? Please. Pretty please. Hit the spot. What easy prey you make. Walking right within my blade's embrace. These creatures are so simple to ensnare, Beretha. You mule too much about your task. Forgiveness, Kithrak. And as for you, tell me, why shouldn't I run you through this instant?
threat? <laughs> you threaten me no more than the insects scrambling in the dirt. Baretha, rid us of this worm. I need to continue the hunt for the weapon. At once. Attack her!
need to stay focused. Have to keep going. Deal is done. Shall we extend our contract? So much as a lick of that mouth-watering meat of yours. Consider me satisfied. All right, time to see what new horrors waiting for us. distance, darling. stopped me yet anything of use runes are etched on the slate, forming an array of arcs and circles. You learn nothing from the slate. <laughs> 